All right, guys, we are live. I'm just going to just bear with me here. I'm going to send this out on Twitter so that everybody knows that we're live. Kind of went live for a second before, and then we came right back down. So I'm just going to put out a notice to join now. And uh, there we go. It'll make the most user friendly. So we're starting by looking at PayPal, of course. Um, and just bear with me for a moment while I make sure that everybody is is in. Hey, Fishballs. Hey, Jay Bagnulo. Uh, let me just get this link. Okay. And then share it so that everybody knows what we're up to. Okay. All right. Um, going to just minimize one window Shinigami I see you okay we will uh, we'll try to touch on that I think there may be some some items that I can discuss so that everybody uh, understands and may be able to apply it to their trading day and then uh, then of course I'll try to take some questions as well <clears throat> easy day for chasing so I think uh, let's just go ahead and get started I'm going to start with PayPal today. So as you know that we had Square, Qualcomm, PayPal, and Netflix. I'm just going to pull something up really quick, guys, so that you can see some extra detail. Um, I mean, I have to manage my own trades, but I do my best to be as clear and specific and even tip you guys in. Let's take a look at something here. Notice, I just want you to notice something. So you see the watch list, of course. Yeah, me and my typo, 28, 29. You see the watch list, we have our triggers, everybody understands that. One thing I'm gonna draw your attention to, you know, mind the spreads, of course mind the spreads, we already know what that means. Notice I dropped this little note about Netflix. It's hard to, move, hard to read, move aggressively. I always practice patience and caution. The reason I said this doesn't mean that everybody has to move aggressively. What it means is that for those of you who do take it earlier, who will take opening range plays or who are a little bit more aggressive, be ready to move aggressively. I, I mean, I, I'm not a fortune teller, but I can't call it out any better. 8.21 a.m. I'm saying, Netflix, hard to read. Move aggressively. Didn't have a lot of PM activity. So be ready to move aggressively. And we'll see what that means when we get to Netflix. But just remember that I noted that. And of course, you guys know what the results were. These were obviously the best possible results you can get from the trades. 150% on Square. 120% on Qualcomm. 63% on PayPal. 58% on Netflix. That's all four callouts, right? Another multi 100% day and, you know, put all those notes and uh, those are the trades. So let's get right to it. We're going to talk about PayPal first. Okay. So PayPal, I'm going to zoom in here just a little bit. This was an right off the get go trade, right? So I'll zoom in and I'll zoom right back out. Um, fish balls. I know you're listening. <laughs> Not trying to put you under the microscope here. Here we go. Breaks down. Uh, just so everybody knows, and, and I know not everybody uses candles, everybody has a different time view. I don't really care about the shape of the candle, right? I just, I read it for what it means. That's all it is. And I like more data than less. So I run with one minute. I don't like to have anything delayed. I like to be as granular as possible. So what does this mean? When you see this, the body of the of a candle, and this is not going to be a, a lesson on reading candles, but I'm just going to go through this quickly because it's relevant. Body of the candle tells you the open and the close when it's green, that means the open is at the bottom, right, of this rectangle, and the close is at the top. These wicks, this is what you call the wicks, these lines, just show you the range that it moved through in that time period, and this is the first minute, right? When it's red, the top is the open and the bottom is the close, right? So PayPal opens at 190.02, right? And at, sorry, 190.03, as you can see, uh, if you look up, look up here, it tells you the open. Well, it just moved. 190.03. That's above our trigger. That's well, below our, uh, well above our trigger. That's 18 cents above our trigger. Okay, so when would I have entered this, right? Pulls back within that first minute, so not at zero seconds <laughs> for anybody wondering. I did have that question saying, like, how, how would anybody get that? That's exactly at open. Nope, open is right here, right? And this is close. During that time frame, you had to be quick. This was aggressive, and it's not for everybody. I want to make that clear. When would you have entered? You'd have entered as it broke the trigger. You know, if you get in here, that's fine. 
you, you maybe jump the gun a tiny bit. I understand it happens. We're not perfect. An opening range is difficult. There's spreads. We're moving really quickly. You're going to take that. You're going to ride that. This is where you start setting your, your stop losses, your trailing stop. Right? We've, we've peaked because it ran straight up. I was watching. So we ran up. As we start to pull back, you lock in your profits. If you're not comfortable with that yet, you need to see my exit strategy videos. That means we're moving our stop losses up as we go with trailing stops or you're taking off size. You cannot suffer this loss. If you ended up here, you are not listening to anything that I've said and you're just kind of going wild west on this. You're going rogue and, and doing some YOLO trading. You have no reason, no business taking a loss after it's run here. I posted about this. I put it up. I said, hey, guys, watch your stop losses. Every single trade that we're calling out is up and it was up in the first few minutes. You start moving your stops up or you sizing off. If you're not comfortable with that, watch my video on maximizing your profits. It teaches you how to exit. I'm really diligent about this because capital protection is everything. You can't go from this 63%. You're 63% ahead of the game right here. You can't let that come back. I don't even want to hear of people coming down to 30%. You can't put 50% of your gains on the line like that. Scale out, exit. So that's what I'm doing. I'm here. I'm hoping for it to continue running. Starts pulling back. Okay, okay, I'm scaling out. Maybe I'm holding on a little bit longer, right? The close here, that's fine, right? I'm I could still be in the trade with some position. I'm out. Personally, I'm out here, right? I don't like that it keeps going back. I'm not giving money back. We're here to take money, not give it back. And then it could keep running. You know, maybe someone got out here and started scaling. At this point, everybody's out, right? You're out. Like I said, you're 63% here. This is about 25, 30. You shouldn't even be, you should not suffer that much of a pullback, right? So, of course, as we see it coming down, and, and guys, keep in mind, I have multiple screens open. I'm calling this out. I'm trying to help everybody. I'm not charging anything. <laughs> it's just, it's a little bit tricky. But I did call out. I said, hey, do not try to catch a falling knife. What does that mean? Look at this. Look at this move down. Look how heavy and fast that move down is, right? That means you shouldn't be trying to enter here. And I, and I put that up. And again, the point is not for me to, be able to walk everybody through step by step because I'm managing my own trades and that's not going to help you become a better trader. But I do teach things and say, I don't like these big moves. So you shouldn't have been entering here, but I specifically called out and said, do not try to catch a falling knife. Okay. And then you see a little bit of a breakdown further. Let's zoom out. PayPal goes down. Now I do get questions about how I trade and whether you should enter the opening range. And we're going to touch on PayPal, whether you should re-enter it here, but let's go over a little bit of that. How I trade. Guys, I became a professional stock trader in 2005. I got my options specialization, options and derivative specialization in 2005. It's pretty much 2022. I'm going to trade differently. I build positions sometimes on pullbacks. I do not think that anyone who does not have consistent success or has not done this before should start dabbling with that. It is the most tempting, dangerous thing to do. Averaging down is extremely dangerous. I do things like that. I'm not going to get into that. I'm not going to, that's not the scope of this video, but I don't recommend it. So I take slightly different trades, right? Uh, I got out of PayPal here. I may have re-entered and started building a position and waiting for, for us to move back up. Now let's talk about the opening range. The opening range is critical to discuss because you start seeing a lot of wins in the opening range, right? Particularly yesterday and today, like 70% of the time, I think the plays that I call out, you see opportunities later on in the day. We have retests, we have different opportunities, but some days it's all opening range. And today, as you're going to see when we move into the other trades, everything was near or at the open. I think Netflix maybe give us four minutes. And that was the longest anybody had to start entering a position. That is as opening range as it gets. Should you be trading opening range? If you are not an experienced trader, you should probably not trade opening range. I can't give you specific advice. You have to make your own decisions. Now, I want to touch on some words that I use. I say it is very much dependent on your risk tolerance and it absolutely is, right? But I want you to understand what that means. When people hear can you tolerate that kind of risk? They take it as something spoken in bravado. It's not me asking if you're tough or if you're afraid. That's what people hear. Can you tolerate that risk? Yeah, I'm not afraid. I could tolerate that risk. I'm not asking if you're, you're all very tough, right? Like, we're not here to figure out who's tough and who's 
willing to take something painful, you're in the wrong business, right? Because the market will give you as much pain as you're willing to take, as more than you're willing to take. That's not what it is. The question is, it's based on your capital and your experience. Is this something that you should be engaging in? Can you tolerate a bigger loss? Would that be efficient for your portfolio to begin engaging in this, right? And I also want to note that it actually doesn't really have as much to do with your capital as it does where you are in your trading career, right? Just because you put 25 that you may have a profession where you have a lot of disposable income and you say, I want to get into this trading thing. I'm going to put 25,000. I'm going to put 50,000, a hundred thousand dollars in an account. Okay. Guess what that means? If you're inexperienced, it means that you might lose 25, 50 or a hundred thousand dollars making horrible trades. It does not mean that you are now an experienced trader. So again, I just want to stress that because I know everybody's looking at this who wasn't comfortable thinking, ah, oh, man, I missed, I should have got in. Nope, not if you're not comfortable. And the way to build comfort with it is watch, learn, experience. I mean, just look at this. Look at this gap down, right? The price is literally jumping. We jumped up and jumped down. These are jumps of multiple percentage points, more gaps. This is wild. This is a wild period of time. I want you to see these gaps. That means it closed here and then it opened here. There was, wasn't even continuity in price. We had a jump. We call those gaps. Gap, gap, gap. Those are huge in terms of volatility. So just because, here's what I want to stress. When I talk about wide spreads and volatility, what this means is even if you set a stop loss of, let's say, minus 10% and you think, well, I'm going to be safe in this opening range, that's how I'll play it. That's smarter than just going wild west on it or just going rogue. But guess what? Just because you have a stop loss of minus 10% does not mean you will be filled at that. You may get out worse. It simply means that once you're at minus 10%, it triggers a market order from your broker. So you might have tried to get out at minus 10% here and it might have plummeted on you and you might be looking at minus 18, even with a stop loss because of the volatility. So that's important to know. What would I do if I was trying to learn this? Start with the minimum amount of contracts. Start with one contract. Learn, see how it goes really, really small position size. But again, I wanted to touch on that because I know that days like today, everybody wonders, should I have taken all these plays? If you didn't, no problem. Let's finish PayPal and then we'll move on. So what do we see here? We see another opportunity right here, okay? And what I say, and I stress this, I don't like to get in after a really big move. This is a big move. Here we are at 1040 and within 40 minutes, look at how we've recovered, just rocketing up. I'm not completely comfortable. Now, if you did get in here, you'd have been up over 15%. You should have moved your stop loss. It's zero. And you probably break even back here when it gets when it touches back. Believe it or not, this probably over here, I'm not crazy about getting in on a breakdown, but this is consolidation. This probably would have been a smarter place to get in than here. And guess what? This is going to blow your mind. You would have stopped out at break even here. If you'd have got in here, probably would have been a little bit smarter you would have probably taken a 10% stop loss. You know, unless you just move your stops up when you're about eight, 9% or break even. So your results probably would have been a little bit worse here, even though it was the smarter place. I think that's important. I'm gonna to touch on that in a different video, but that can happen, right? Good trades is what's important. And then of course, yield a lot of other opportunities. I mean, I wouldn't have entered on this kind of move. Um, if you did, you would have to have been quick, set your stops. Again, this is way too fast to move. I probably wouldn't have entered uh, like my trading is a little bit different. I might enter on something like that, but I don't think people should be trying to enter there. Um, and then these, these are all just break even stop a break. Even you're probably not down 10%. I mean, if you took it here, if you got in here right after this breakdown, a little bit of a recover. Yeah. You're way ahead. So there's some opportunities. There's some moments where you might break even maybe stop at minus 10, but I really wanted to go over the opening range. So let me just quickly stop for a second and look at the questions daily weekly minus three percent strong conviction five percent okay thanks Rikin. um appreciate it let's see yeah um pedro Oliveira. fish balls is correct it depends on your broker you know i i haven't used every broker and they're all a little different uh fish balls hopefully I'm not going to point at specifics hopefully some of that clears some items up for you i pasted a screenshot as well uh, consider a different broker. <laughs> I don't know. I, I know you're using Weeble. Um, and guys, I saw people chasing as well. That's the part that kills me about 
early traders getting in is they just feel this sense of excitement. You see the price flying up and you think it's got to continue. Now, it comes back down as fast or faster. Look how fast it shot up. Look how fast it shot down. That's the crazy part about the opening range. So um, you have to be careful. It comes quickly. It goes quickly. And uh, let me see. I'm just going to read a few more of the questions, see if there are any. Um, okay, it looks like we're clear to go. I'm going to move on to Netflix. This is really this is really important too. So as you saw with PayPal, we see this in Netflix. Netflix actually breaks down through our trigger, comes back up, gives us actually exceeds it, and then gaps. And this is really interesting. So it's almost hard to read this. Like we we actually had an opportunity where we get in here, where we come up, and then you take a gap. You can get in here right? We're still at 610, a little bit up and down. You come down, you don't stop out. And then like at this point, I didn't want to hear about anybody getting on Netflix early and not taking profits. And you're going to notice like, look at my handle name on Twitter. Profits taken, not profits given back to the market. If you're in at 610, right? This constitutes a three point plus move. Look, our trigger is 61070, and here we are peaking out at basically 614. This is a, uh, yeah, 61398. Let's say 614. You know, you're over three points, over three points if you are not moving your stop losses up. And again, you get another opportunity here, right? We close here, and we st we open here, and then we move up. You get another opportunity. Look at all these opportunities. This is your time. If you're going to play inside of the opening range and you're not moving quickly stop it stop playing inside the opening range anybody who took netflix this was an easy trade three points plus is big guys right that's that's a big big move you should have scaled out um and that's what happened and then of course you know the market kind of tanked off of course we had the pullback on netflix um and then let's take a look at qualcomm and have your questions ready guys you can just type them in chat i will try to respond to everybody qualcomm Qualcomm did not give you a ton of time to get in, right? It's like PayPal. Opened here, right? Remember, <laughs> I had this talk with somebody who was thinking uh, we had to get in at zero seconds. And uh, I'm picking on him. And uh, yeah, we, we dipped down. This is the very open. This is where we're at 930 in zero seconds. We dip down, breaks. If you're taking it, if you were focused on Qualcomm, and this is why I say to narrow things, right? Just because there's four plays doesn't mean you have to try and follow them all. Particularly if you're trying to get in the opening range, you almost have to pick one and really zero in on it. Pedro Oliveira made some profits on Qualcomm. Just caught that. Good job. If you got in on Qualcomm, it was off to the races. You made a lot of money, right? This one ran for over 150%. To me, your scale out begins somewhere around here. By here, you're probably all out. Take that money. You're probably 80, 90, 100% up. Take it. Take it. If you held and just kept some size on, that's understandable. Maybe you can hold it. and We would run up here. There's no reason to take all your size off. Maybe take a little bit more size here. Definitely finished your position scaling out around here. You have no reason to let it pull back further. Does it Does it continue, consolidate, do up, make ups and downs and stay above our trigger? Yeah, but make the most money. Also, something to note, guys. Again, this is not equal to this just because they're at the same price point because the IV the option price is going to be very different right so getting out early you know when you get those opportunities it's important to at least scale out or set trailing stops right uh so if you I'm just catch on the left trading view doesn't have precise idea with premium level accounts as we confirmed discord today aha yes open a free think or swim account if you're not getting this sort of thing this I'm in think or swim it's free it's free guys unless you're outside of the country um, so that's how you should play Qualcomm. Again, just we had a full day. Like even if you made the biggest mistakes, your hair caught on fire, you had to run out of your house, your dog needed to go to the bathroom, you left, you would have come back and you still would have been in profit. But you absolutely should not have suffered this pullback, right? Yeah, you're still profitable, but that is absolutely horrible trading. Like if you held on, like, I mean, if you held from here to here, I don't know what you're doing. But let's say you did and you get back right back up and you peaked here. If you're not out by around here, you're you're playing some sort of casino game that is not disciplined trading. Okay, 
So let's take a quick look. Actually, let's let's go to the questions here really quickly. I will take a quick look and scroll up. So I was in, out. Nice job, JHC. Yeah, 59 cents, 70, bang, in and out. That's right. It was crazy today. What a move on all of them. Enter PayPal and still holding. Okay. I'm wondering where you entered PayPal. It's certainly not at the open, uh, Rick and Shah. Um, but that's great if you're up. Let's see here. For a small account, how would you navigate the PDT rule? Target one trade. Um, Lucky Lucum 3 for a small account. So here's a great bonus. This wasn't the intent of this video, but I try to share all the knowledge that I can. You can open a cash account and you are not subject to the PDT rule. What does that mean? So in your normal account, when you open an account by default, they set you on a margin account. So that means you can borrow, right? Options aren't marginable anyhow. So meaning, you know, for, for a normal underlying stock, you can put 40% of the equity down and the rest is on margin. You can't do that with options. It's 100% cash anyhow. So if you're trading options, you do that of a cash account. So you can open another account with your brokerage and on that account, select cash account. And you're not subject to the PDT rule. So you could trade as, as much as you like because it's cash, you're not borrowing any of their money. And options settle the next day, so you're also not waiting, you know, um, T plus two for the settlement period, which by the way, back in the day used to be T plus three. Clear the mud, thank you. Just register for IBKR. Ah, no, I could have given you my referral link. <laughs> Anybody who wants to go to IBKR, I have never put it out there. I can, I can give you my referral link, but if you just want to sign up, just no worries at all. Um, let me look through. Clear the mud, bro, thank you. Just registered, awesome, awesome. Yeah, yeah, fish balls. I mean, I think you're doing good things. Guys, a lot of people are doing good things, but some of the brokerages kill you. I'm charting on Thinkorswim. I don't trade on Thinkorswim. And I'm gonna be just, I'm gonna be very honest. Here's the irony. I got my start in this business with TD. So TD Ameritrade, you know, used to be Ameritrade and TD, and TD used to be TD Bank, uh, stood for Toronto Dominion, right? So most people don't know that TD actually means Toronto Dominion. I think they don't use that because probably not attractive to put a Canadian city name in an American brokerage. Plus they're calling Ameritrade, but it's Toronto. Strange. I got my start with, with TD, and I don't trade through TD anymore. Why not? Just terrible fills. Uh, <laughs> and I'm sorry if anybody from TD, I know that I know there are people that I know who work at TD who watch my videos and <laughs> I know that at least one is checking into this chat. Uh, you guys know my stance. I've, we've probably spoken privately. After TD changed to becoming free for trades, just I can't tolerate the bad fills. It would skip over my... Uh, my bids, I wouldn't get good fills. I like when I trade underlying and after hours, I wouldn't get filled. Way too many problems. I could tolerate a lot of things that you know. If you have a weird color scheme or you don't have night mode or there's all maybe you're missing a feature or two, fine. If my fills are getting messed up, no, that's it. I'm out of there, right? And I ran it. I ran Thinkorswim side by side with some other platforms, and I confirmed my suspicions and I gave it multiple opportunities that makes me very upset right because that's just burning me where i'm making the right move it's just not filling me i can't do it i can't do it so welcome to the light side i'm going to take a couple more questions here entry is most difficult with your alerts i sometimes get confused when i should enter should we wait for a retest or not rick and shaw depends you know i spent the very beginning of this if you missed it go back over it depends on your tolerance for for risk and what you your comfort level is whether you want to take it early or take it later um, and you can always take the same trade more than once. Um, Jay Bang Nula, any tips you could share for whether a move is a quick scalp, a short duration move like these versus multi-day. When I'm calling things out, I'm calling them out on a day trade basis. In the rare event, I will note that something is a swing trade candidate. A swing trade candidate, let me clarify what that means to me. It means that I'm calling it out for the day and I see upside on the day. And I did this recently with, the last one was QS, I believe means that I see positive upside on the day, and I think there may be opportunity for it to run, but beyond the day, perform your due diligence. If you're not comfortable doing that and you took it, take your profits from the day if it's on the upside and clear out. Uh, super fast in the morning, okay. And I'll just take one or two more. If the price comes again to the entry pullback, close to it, do you wait for it to go below the entry or make a judgment call? Alexander Hamilton, uh, in the beginning, until I'm a consistent, profitable trader, I stick to I, I make sure that it goes under and then breaks back up. You know, as you progress, that's when you practice more, uh, more discretion, right? Because it's so easy to just start winging everything. 
Okay, um, trading anything tomorrow? Maybe. Um, I think so. Right. Uh, my neighbor's an engineer at TDL. Pass along your complaints. Yeah, I've got friends there. That's that's where I started. Um, I mean, it's a business decision. They made every. They turned to free. Um, maybe it's just the amount of users, their lag, uh, their their order flow, whatever it is. Until I've until I've heard that it, it's cleared up. You know, I might I do a little tests on there, but yeah. Um, I I actually don't use Interactive Broker as much. Uh, it's what I recommend for a lot of people. I use uh, TradeStation, but I can't recommend that because I'm having some issues with them right now. Um, my system froze. It was only once in all of my trading with them, but it froze and they had committed an error and I had to exit and come back in during a live trade. And I lost, I lost profits, but that's a loss to me because I was trying to exit and it just gave me an error. So we're in a little fight until they respond to me. And so long as they can't respond to me like professionals via email, I cannot suggest them, but they are laser fast for entries, faster than anybody. Um, and if you guys want to switch over to interactive brokers, let me know. I do have a referral link I'll, I'll send you over. Okay. So we, we've taken a look at Qualcomm. We took a look at Netflix. Let's take a look at Square. This was the other way, right? This was to the downside, right? I marked that, I put it in chat. If you saw the images, there was a massive bullish flow. I've been, sorry, a bearish flow. I've been bearish in general, um, just looking at the charts and looking at the fundamentals of the company and, and seeing where Square is at. I'm not as hot on Square lately. I felt like they were pulling back. I posted as a trade. We had a couple of opportunities, so you don't have to be lightning fast. Here we go. Came up, pulled back. This is our open. This is where you enter. And you know why Square is big, easy money to me, right? Because there are differences in these trades. Look at this. Look at this move down with little pullback. Where could you have maybe stopped out? Or not stopped out, sorry. Where have you taken profits? Probably taken some profits here, right? Even though we have this big move down here, see this this wick? I, like I, It drives me crazy when all these fakes, I, I explain this in my other videos. When I hear people saying, I took it here and I sold here. No, you didn't. Stop lying. You're fake. Because if you did that, if you sold your entire position here, first of all, that means you can see the future and you knew exactly where this was going to go because this was the peak and it was very brief. It also means that you came all the way here with some great profits from 164 down three points in just a couple minutes and you suffered a pullback all the way up here without taking size off any putting any money on the table or and taking money off the table. You're a terrible trader. Anybody tells you this, red flag. And guys, keep an eye on my feed because I named the things that these, these fakes and con artists do. They slip up all the time because they know the things that sound right, like sound believable. They've memorized what they need to say, but they slip up on all the nuances like, yeah, I did this, bro. But then they'll watch this kind of video and be like, oh, I didn't take it all. Right. You just con artists. It's really easy to read for me. Got my license 2005, became a professional. I'm probably at most of my position right here. If I'm keeping anything on, it's something where I'm just taking size off. I'm keeping a small portion of my size, then I'm writing it out and once I saw this, I'd say, okay, taking all my size, right? So by here, I'm completely out. But look at this move. That's here to here. I'm happy. I don't need to post and be like, I made 700%. No, you didn't. Knock it off. Uh, and I did see, oh, man, I see too many really silly things posted by these con artists. Um, one of them, I, I got to mention, one of them had a big post about how if you followed his trades with like $200, you would have made $70,000 last week. <sighs> Yeah, okay. That's that's why you're on Twitter asking people to send you X dollars for your Discord account, right? These guys are just scammers. Um, let me take some questions. So yeah, you should have been out here. Keep a little size on, I get it. If you're using my exit strategies, you're out the rest of it here. And should you be upset that you didn't catch this? No, you should look at this. And the IV is gonna be super high, right? Because you're gonna get all that premium from the IV spiking up for you. You're going to make a, a lot of money right here. Guys, let me take some questions. Let me take a look. I want to make sure that I answer all of your head, uh, all of your questions head on, whether they're comfortable or not. If you think something was a loser, you'll see that I qualify things down to time, seconds, uh, people explaining things. And I even noted that you could have taken a smart trade and stopped out earlier, right? It's not all sunshine and rainbows. Another way to catch the liars and the fakers. When they, when they talk about losses, they're always a glance over it. I'll emphasize on it. You can have a good trade and hit a stop loss. 
questions. Let's have some live questions. Ask me your questions, whatever you're, whatever you're struggling with. It's open book, right? <laughs> I used to advise private clients, very expensive. Um, this is this is free. I'm sitting here. Um, and, and for like more advanced stuff, uh, I probably won't, won't touch on a lot of the advanced stuff, like my trading, like position building sort of thing, just because I, I don't want to confuse people. I want you to become better traders, not YOLO traders trying to execute really difficult things that make it hard for you to be profitable. Okay. So let me look at these questions. Uh, just got here from the beginning. Thank you for doing this. Thanks, Jake Lovato. Appreciate that. Um, better name. Do I use spreads? I have. I mean, uh, like I said, I'm, I was a licensed options and derivative specialist. So I'm very familiar with it. And I took in a seminar not too long ago. And there are so many just different new spreads and formations and condors and iron bulls and and uh, man, there's so many wild names i mean people just make up their own names for whatever they do in the right market conditions i have typically like I'll, I'll, sometimes i'll write options to my underlying but uh i don't like too many spreads right now particularly the spreads that require us to stay stable um you know you can take a spread that also hedges to the upside so where you're buying one a little bit further out of the money and then selling one closer to the money, that sort of thing. Again, it's it's got to be, I'm usually looking at specific securities and market conditions where I, the price kind of stays stable. Otherwise, I don't like to hedge my upside and downside. I'm able to do that with my stop losses. I, I don't like to do it with uh, varying derivatives because there's so many variables that shift in between them. Uh, I just don't like that for managing my capital and I don't find that I get the right returns. But with that said, I know some people who specialize in spreads and, you know, butterfly, iron condor, different kind of bola, all those new names. And they do fantastically. It's just uh, I don't see it as the right thing for beginners or it's highly profitable for me. Better name. I will um, I will post that. I will post my indirect brokers link on on Twitter. Um, I'm hearing a lot of people getting really bad fills or just not getting the features that they like. So I will definitely post it away from me there. And I, and I appreciate that. Rikasha, thanks. I selfishly hope you don't get too famous. <laughs> Keep talking to us only. It's okay. I was, hey, I was probably better known in my last position, just maybe in a different space as a CEO of a tech company. So uh, I don't see myself any differently based on how many people know me. I, you know, do all the same things I used to do when I was like 10 outside of trading. Uh, Let's see. It's view on Tasty Works as a broker. I'm struggling with their platform. Humphrey, I'll put something up on Interactive Brokers. I don't know a lot about Tasty Works. Haven't used them, but I will put something up. PayPal's flying great. Um, again, if you're just joining us, hammer out your questions. Just let me know. This is this is an open forum. I got a couple minutes. Uh, I'll run this for another 10, 12. Let's see. Keep it on because it was cheap. Okay. Husky 4559. I like Huskies. Um, Hey PT, in this situation, do you ever take your full position off after that three point move down and look to re-enter on strike, another strike on pullbacks with clear rejection? So I will do something like that sometimes, but that is, uh, that's advanced, right? And sometimes I'll do that. Sometimes I will uh, position build at, at different areas, but uh, it's beyond the scope of this specific video and be very careful with that because you know, what people feel are clear rejections. Like what, what's a clear rejection, right? It, it's a lot of its perception depends how you're analyzing it. So I get concerned when I hear that because these terms get thrown around by the fakers who don't know what they're talking about and they'll just draw lines and go, okay, see how we're rejected and then we try to hit the limit there and then we bounce around here. You, you can draw anything you want, guys. There's a difference of understanding price action and it takes time and some knowing. Um, so I'm careful about that. But yeah, that's an, that's an advanced, uh, advanced move. I agree. It's definitely responsible that people set those expectations. Don't listen to the furus. If I tell you anything, they're all con artists, 99.9% .9 of them. I have found very few. I paid to get into groups uh, to investigate. That's fine. Just absolutely terrible. If you guys want, I can go over some of the funnier ones in a minute or two that just make me laugh and explain them to you. So let me know in chat whether you want me to go over some of the silliest furu things I've seen just in the last few days. I get a lot of private messages. Jake Lovato, good question. How many monitors do you use? multiple monitors right in my main view there are two um i have a curved 
widescreen and I have a secondary monitor that just has a chart of securities to let me know what's coming up, what's approaching. And I also use, uh, I also use alerts, right? And again, let's say that this was to the upside, right? So we wanna take it at 164.40 when it breaks. And this is where we're at right now. I would usually set an alert around here. Why not right at the limit? Because if it's at the limit, it alerts me, it's already gone if it's moving up. I set it here because what that tells me is, hey, it's close to what we want, or maybe a little bit back. I'll set it, and you don't have to be exact. I set it in a place where it can alert me and let me know that we're on the way, and then I could start focusing on it, right? Because if I'm not looking at Square and I hear my alarm go off, it's great because it just tells me, hey, Square's approaching, pull it into your main view. So I pull it off one of my secondary monitors. Um, let's see, so that's Jake Pilato. Do you set a stop losses bracket order when you enter? Zen, no, but I think that's a good idea for people. Jason C, uh, how do you find a straw, or do you just trade the big ones? Actually, I, I've never called out Tesla, Microsoft, Apple, uh, Spy, QQQ. You'll notice that. That's actually, Jason C, that's a good one. That's, that's a scam that a lot of uh, con artists use because they know there's going to be action on those, right? So when they need a safety blanket, they wait till they're close to the open and they say, calls here, puts here, right? It's the biggest scam in the world. You see somebody calling out calls and puts on the same stock. If they're the guru, if they're the furu, why don't they have the, any inclination as to where it's going to go? Put some skin in the game. Put your reputation behind something. Don't just say it could go. Lots of activity. I see their breakdowns. Oh, oh, huge hammer on this. Lots of activity. All right. So what's your insight, Mr. Furu? Well, I think it'll go up or down. That's what you're saying when you call calls and puts. You think a stock will go up or down? Wow. Jeez. Every stock in the history of the market with any kind of liquidity will go up and down at certain points in the day. If you have any insight, where's it going? I put it out there and I could be dead wrong, right? But you'll notice that like a scam artist is always afraid of being wrong. So they talk in circles. They're very general. They're vague. Um, so that was a good question. Uh, do you use Discord? I'm not on Discord. Uh, do you find these unusual wills too? Do I find it helpful? Yeah, absolutely. Love using it. Nick C, do you use fibs um, for, nope, nope, I don't use any shapes. No, I don't draw shapes on my screen. I don't use Fibonacci stuff. All that is just, it's nonsense. If it helps you see something, sure, you can put those on your, uh, on your screen. Like I see candles, but I don't care. They just, it's, they just feed me data. So what do I know is I know this was the open, this was the close. It just lets me understand what happened in that minute. Otherwise, it's just a shape. It's like, that's why when someone tells you, Wait for the candle close. Oh, zip it. Just, you don't know what you're talking about. And any professional would laugh these people out of the room. Um, so no, I do not use Fibonacci. Yoshi Minami. I just want to say thank you for doing all these for people. You're a good man. Oh, thank you, Yoshi. Um, Jake Lovato, we may, may we ask what tech company or at least how big? Yeah, so, um, you know, our annual, when I took over our annual revenue, um, was about half a million dollars and uh, it was a small company and I grew it to an Inc. Inc. 50 company. We were actually rated 40th in the country. It's one of the fastest growing companies. We we're doing $30 million in revenue per year. I was in Inc. Magazine. The name was CPA Lead. You can look it up in my background. If you look me up, my name is Peter Tarr. I put articles, um, that sort of thing. Man. Don't want to pump my own tires here. So um, we'll move past that. Thoughts on AMD calls. Uh, Dorowski, I don't know. I haven't looked at AMD today. Thanks for answering questions. Can we preset price before we want to go in like a limit? Better name, yes, but uh, I don't recommend doing that. I recommend looking at it. I don't like automating anything with options because there's just way too many variables. There are way too many variables and the price jumps all over the place. Like, let me pull up these square, square contracts. Here we go, all right? Look at the way this jumps, right? Look at the gaps in price. We're all over the place based on the underlying. Like we're, look, look how we're just ripping all over. Look, we go from here to here and then look at that pullback the next minute, right? And again, a thin line doesn't mean there was no volume. A thin line just means there's very, very little activity and movement. But this is why you don't want to just set prices because how do you know where, where to get in? I, I don't like doing that. I don't like uh, automating for options. It's very dangerous. I get it for underlying, not for options. Um, just going to run through a few more questions here, guys. And what do you think about NVIDIA going up or down? I mean, I haven't looked at NVIDIA. I didn't call NVIDIA out. If you're asking my general sentiment, I've had this question asked a few times. Uh, 
I think that the near term, there's a lot of volatility. The feds might be making moves so that could impact the entire market. We're still in a shortage for um, semiconductors and for graphics cards, but I do like some of the strategic moves that NVIDIA has made. I know that they are separating to two different divisions and units, one that's gonna be focused on the crypto community and mining cards, and one that will insulate their gaming community because right now they're upsetting a lot of customers. I think that's very smart in the long run allows them to uh, lean out some of their product and cater it specifically to their target audience. Because right now it's just a, a crazy free-for-all with uh, some very upset gamers because, yeah, they want to buy a new graphics card, but they're not, gonna, they're not willing to put the kind of money into it that somebody would who's mining. So um, short-term issues, I think that long-term they're on the right track, but you know, um, we'll see how that goes. There is also, of course, there's you know, we can have another shutdown or a lockdown and that sort of thing that could impact them. A um, few more questions, guys, and then we'll wrap up. Hey, I have a question. When searching and plays, do you look at bid and ask on the unusual whales? Yes, I do. Um, I look at that. It's, and it's just one piece of indication. I have heard of some people that are saying, oh, this guy knows what he's talking about. This fool knows what he's talking about. And they set rules like this is the only premium to go by. And you only want to look for um, moves where it hits the ask. Red flag unfollow this person doesn't know what they're, they're talking about just because they've guessed a few things right doesn't mean anything if i asked you today i said squares going up or down right and look how far down it went what are your odds of getting it right if you know nothing if you just ask your grandmother or something unless your grandmother is like a stock guru then why are you listening to me talk to your grandma um so you're gonna say up or down you got a 50 50 chance ignore these people they don't know what they're talking about it has nothing to do with exposure you don't have to hit the ask. It's absolute, just laugh that person out of the room. It's so terrible. The bad advice, and then they try to make it, again, what a con artist does is they talk around things and they try to confuse you like, oh, hitting the ask shows there's desperation and a sense of urgency. No, it doesn't. And hitting the bid doesn't mean that you weren't trying very hard to get into this position. Um, so yeah, no, that's not critical. Can you list the Furu's uh, better name? No, I'll just, I don't like naming names. It's just. Who I am as a person. I don't like calling people out. Even if, even if someone says something rude to me on our, um, on my Twitter feed or sends me a private message, I don't call them out by name. It's just who I am. Um, but what I'll do is better. I'll teach you what the scams are so you can avoid them. And then when you see them applied, you know who that person is. It's funny. I noticed a lot of uh, I guys. I noticed a lot of people blocked me. Some of these con artists. And then I think I said something along the lines, of, "FY, if you block me." I never called your name out. You're essentially saying you're guilty. And so then they unblocked me. Uh, it's funny to see. Wellness NYC, humor us. Okay, I'll take a couple minutes to humor you with some of the funnier uh, Furu scams. One of them said had you invested, uh, it was like $200, a couple hundred bucks with us. You'd have made 70,000 following our page last week. Anybody who, who fell for this or let them excite them is absolutely crazy. So this required you to only take their winning trades not the ones that would have stopped you out first of all then on their winning trades you would have to have had to have entered perfectly on every single trade and here's where it's funnier because they obviously aren't very good at math their trades ran simultaneously and some of them required you to exit or enter almost around the same time so you would have had to have managed multiple trades all week entering at the exact same time on multiple different trades exiting at perfectly the exact peak and rolling your money getting out getting back in the hoops you had to have jumped through and many conflicted with each, with each other would have been insane to actually do that and uh but that's that's what furus do they don't think they don't think beyond like one inch they just want to say you would have made 70 grand no i actually looked at it and guess what two you had multiple trades going at the same time right so i would have had to sell them perfectly or predicted in my head where the peak would have been and set a request for options no less where it would have been and set my sale price there yeah okay crazy uh, another one i heard is and this is something someone teaches in their course that they charge i don't even want to say the exact exact number because i don't want to that's just who i am i don't like to name people it's not about going after them it's about helping you guys someone said who's charging between a thousand and fifteen hundred dollars to join their um i also have to be careful on what i call it group or they're to to be mentored by them and uh probably have no background use a fake image the usual because they don't want you to know who they are they don't want you to know that they're you know i always say working at starbucks a week ago but any random job right and i have full respect for those people 
They said, if you ever see an option that, ha that is out of the money, you guys ready for this? If you see an option that's out of the money that has about two times the open interest and volume as the highest volume in the money option, that out of the money option will act as a magnet for the price and the price will gravitate there. I'm not kidding. They are saying that something simply having volume will cause the price to gravitate to it. Uh, yeah, so that's that's another one of them. And then the big scam is just calls and puts on, on all their trades. They never have any conviction, never want to say anything. General terms like it could go, see lots of volumes, looks like bears. Oh yeah, there was one guy the other day saying, Love this huge bullish flow, but he wouldn't call, he he calls calls and puts. So then it went down. He's like, yeah, sweet, it hit our puts. It's like the only thing you did say was heavy bullish flow. But again, they do what's called feathering the nest. They set it up so that if they're right, they're wrong. They're still right. There's there's no way that they can be wrong when they're saying calls and puts because it's scamming. Nick, uh, yeah, thank you, uh, Genevax. Awesome information is thank you, Genevax. Uh, new follower here, Amir. Thank you, Amir. Uh, I've been, geez, I'm scrolling down. We're trying to clear these out. Uh, I'll just take these last questions. So let's see. Uh, while setting alerts, a few ticks below the trigger. Just another great piece of advice. Thanks, Tim Phillips. Yeah, yeah. Don't let yourself scramble. Don't set your alert here. Set it lower. Like if we're here, yours is here. You know that we've the prices come up. Just get it in your view. That's what I do is I will have it on my side screen. I'll go, oh, I just got an alert on PayPal. Cool. I'm going to click on PayPal. What's going on? Say my alert was up here. Okay. I see it's approaching. We just triggered and my entry is up here. Great. I know it's on its way. Um, let's see. I love when you go crazy on furus. There's nothing worse than people scamming, man. Um, I worked hard to get to where I am and people want to take shortcuts. If they weren't here, they'd be in the health industry. Those are the two most scammed industries. They'd be selling you magic pills that'll make you feel better. They would have memorized terms like it releases specific enzymes that have a, a unique effect in the human body. Not nah, get out of here, con artist. Uh, and I can spot them from a mile away. Calls and puts, your easiest scam. Uh, what are the other scams? People who make you join their groups and say that they took trades, but somehow they always get magical fills that don't make sense. That's the even trickier one because then you're doubting yourself going, huh, he got like 10 cents better than me on the way in and on the way out. But if you watch it and you're like me and I joined one of these groups, you can catch them. Can you go over your screenshots and your results tweets from usual as option from today's callouts? Yeah, I should pull those. Um, I think you mean the options flow. Yeah, I should I should pull those up next time. I don't have those available, Lucky Lucum. I don't want to be scrambling around my desktop, but yeah, I could break those down. I, I think I do, and I highlight them. Um, amazing Hazen. Yeah, yeah. Your exposure. So it's a good question. You've said before that you base triggers off of areas where the whales are exposed. Can you give more detail on that? So I want to see what your exposure is. Where did you buy in at? Where would you suffer the most, right? What are you looking for, right? Has your move been realized? I know these are general terms, but I could break it down a little bit more. This might give you some clues into the thinking process. How far out of money are you? Because if you're doing something and you're exposed, that means you're making quite the bet here. And that catches my interest. For example, if there's a whale betting that, you know, they buy 190 calls on PayPal today, right? Uh, let's say this is where the price was at. We're sitting under it. They buy these 190 calls. They're exposed, right? Because they're going to suffer time decay if we do not break that. They're going to have to divest or it's going to have to run. So that catches my attention because what they're saying is, this is what I'm going to bet that it's happening. I want to know what you're betting, right? It's kind of like if you ask someone a question and they say, yeah, um, I'm confident this will happen. You say, yeah, how much would you bet? They say, ah, I wouldn't bet on it. Okay, that's like your, your fake gurus with the calls and puts, right? They always want to be right. If someone goes, it's going to go up and I'll bet you $100,000. You take a step back. First, you got to wonder if they have $100,000. But let's assume they do. That's where you start thinking, okay, well, that's interesting. Or they didn't even bet you. You see that they just laid a bet down $100,000. That's going to go up. You listen more carefully. Why? Because they're exposed. They have skin in the game. Kind of like with my Twitter feed, I put myself out there. I say whether we're going to the upside or downside, right? No calls and puts. Skin in the game. Uh, food is a wild, literally, for an upcoming mentorship program. Yeah, but like, again, if you pay for a good service, um, and this is from Don Jones, pay for a good service, sure. Pay, pay whatever the price is, it's value. If I spend $5,000 or $10,000 in its value, I'm a happy person. 
if you rip me off for a hundred, I am not happy. These people are con artists and they rip you off. What are their backgrounds? Who, how are they furus? Like, how are they, like, what do they know about finance, right? Again, these, these people were you know, making coffees a week ago, and I love coffee, so it's a compliment if I say that. Uh, RK1271, what's your goal with all this wonderful education you're providing? I think we're achieving that goal. Um, are you watching option chart underlying monitoring your trade? I'm watching my specific options in my price matrix, Tim Phillips, and the underlying is driving my decision. But I'm also keeping an eye on the options as well because I want to see how it's impacted by the IV. So just because my trigger breaks doesn't mean I'll take it. For example, right here, I would not get in because it's too big of a move. I'd see a spike in the IV. I don't like the price action. So I use them in, in combination. And just a couple more here, guys. I think we went on for a bit. <laughs> Let's see. Fur is charging over 2K for boot camps. Husky. Yeah, I mean, if 99% that person's a con artist, right? Um, front loading is another big one. We'll talk about that on another day. And, and there is a ring of con artists. Uh, I, do, I don't want to say where they live because that will, it, it's too specific, but yeah, where they work together. Like one of them doesn't charge anything and just says, hey, I'm a man of the people, but then refers you to the paid group and then they get people to buy the stocks that they front load, all, all that sort of thing. Um, better name, constantly get unusual way alerts, how to better act on them, create your own custom ones. Um, that's what I do. I don't follow like the alerts, the general alerts, because this information overflow doesn't necessarily mean anything. It's for you to read in on. Uh, unusual whales is just helping every drawing attention, helping everybody understand that there there's value on the platform. Um, Rick, Rick and Shaw, I know who that person is. Alexander Hamilton, correct. A broken clock is to write twice a day. Can't wait for your watch list tonight. Shadow Tempest. I'm just clearing out these last questions. Thank you. I'm trading my own. If you learn enough, you don't need anyone. Yes, Carlos Yamarillo. Yeah. And again, like I said, I mean, there are advanced trading methods and techniques and things of value. You're not finding it from these jokers. Ask them what their background is. Like, show me the CFAs. Show me the people who have worked as uh, traders, who have worked in finance or anything, who, who actually understand about, uh, who actually understand some of the nuances. If liquidity was a magnet, all it needs to order a book. Yeah, exactly, Jake Lovato. Uh, any good education videos and books for learners, better name? Depends on what you're specifically trying to learn. Um, I mean, you can learn a lot of great basics from like Investopedia just in terms of terms and all that sort of thing. Advanced techniques, uh, you get in there. Uh, Daily Trading Coach is a good book. If you're struggling with discipline, I think it's a really good book. Uh, much appreciate your honesty and giving your time. Thanks, Shane B. And we just have a couple more questions to go. What do you say is impressive? Do say is impressive one over you. Let us say, going to start following you and that you post any good stuff. Thanks, Daniel Greenleaf. Appreciate you. Uh, Amir Farad works on non-option small caps as well. Amir Farad, that's a good question. Unusual whales are a good statement. No, oh, ends with a question mark. Unusual whales works on non-option small caps as well? Question mark. <laughs> so it, start, it didn't start as a question, but it ended as one. Gotcha. It can. It can help you guide, right? Never take anything as your, your end-all, be-all piece of information. Use them as part of a group of data sets, right? So that's why when I refer to unusual whales, I often say data point. It's a data point, right? It's an important data point. Um, depending on how dramatic it is, it can be a leading data point and often is, but it's not the only data point. If I see things I don't like in the price action, I see something in the market, see some news, I adjust. And we saw that with a firm. I saw a downgrade and I, and I adjusted our I adjusted our entry position and all those other fakes, I should have blasted everybody. They panicked, and I actually took it as an opportunity for us to make a lot more money uh, because I knew what that meant. So you can use it for small caps, but be careful. There's also not a lot of activity on small caps, so it's usually one buyer, but you can. Uh, peeking at CCL, yeah, maybe I'll take a look. Amir, you really go far. Uh, 100K followers easy. Thank you, Amir. I appreciate you. I meant we'll be starting a subscription service. Um, RK1271, you know, I'm... No, I don't think I'll be starting a subscription service. I'm trying to think of ways to better engage with everybody. Um, Twitter has its limitations. I found a loophole around not being able to make voice notes from an Android phone, which drives me crazy. It's 2022. I was, I was doing voice notes on my BlackBerry. You know, all the stockbrokers and traders had Blackberries back in the day. I was doing that on my, on my BlackBerry Messenger back in 2011. You tell me Twitter can't figure out voice notes, but I, I just do Twitter spaces and record them instead. Um, 
I'm trying to think of how to better engage with everybody. I don't think some mass subscription service really makes makes sense. You know, if I, I think the best thing I could do would be sit down with Twitter developers and have them add a lot of features for me, but it's obviously not happening. And I also use um, YouTube. Uh, India, I know you want to say India. Okay, India. Love India too. Uh, what do you think about AJ Trader? I don't know AJ Trader. Isaac Mugumba. Um, but I'm just going to be honest. I will say I don't know anybody. So that could be that's my answer, whether I do have an opinion on them or don't. Uh, and I usually do know most of the big big guys. I just I just won't call anybody out specifically. I'll just teach you what to look for. And if you see it, you know that someone's a scam artist. Cut and bail. Uh, what is your setup with Thinkorswim? Any step-by-step? -step? Uh, better name? Yeah, check out my video on scalping. I show some, some of my setup on Thinkorswim. Uh, and I actually pair that with so guys, if you're using another broker, I just have their execution window open and I keep my charts for Thinkorswim live during the day. Um, M. Bactol, just found you learning a lot. Catch up on your videos. Do you have one where you demonstrate how do you find entry exit levels? That's going to be M. Bactol. That's a good question. It's nuanced, so I will be adding that. There's no cut and dry way of finding entry exit level. And you'll notice some mornings I adjust them. Sometimes I don't. Um, so it's very nuanced. I think it's going to be a multi-part. Wayne Tat, you can make a Discord yeah, I just I don't see the value in that for everybody, um, and I think with my reach is greatest through through Twitter, so I I'll stick there for now. But you know, keep my eyes open for maybe someone will develop a better platform. I feel like I'm on the right track, but struggle with being hesitant to pull the trigger. Any suggestions on how to execute a good plan? McMahon, which it comes with comfort, right? Um, comfort can be achieved through just watching and learning, and then I graduate from that to either paper trading or small size right so you get comfortable it's like if you're worried about if you've got 10 contracts queued up let's say paypal is at a dollar right you're ready to go in with a thousand dollars you get kind of nervous and you don't pull the trigger okay tomorrow go to one contract right if you see the right setup it doesn't mean you could be reckless like don't be reckless with one penny you don't hear that from the furus oh yeah just another one uh, a lot of the furus say i don't have a set stop loss okay that's really smart <laughs> Somebody was telling me the set stop loss was minus 70%. Just good goodness. Um, yeah, so what you do is you just you size down, right? Size down and um, just uh, McMahon, which I would just go in with one contract tomorrow, right? It's not, about, it's not about your return. It's about the process and getting comfortable. So that's how you build confidence. Size in, but first learn, right? That doesn't mean your brand new trader start hitting the opening range with one contract. No, don't, don't get burned. Carlos Yamarillo, what made you get into trading? Ooh, um, long life story. Uh, I, you know, I, I wanted to do something where I could learn how to be financially independent. I was always ambitious. I like big challenges, and so I knew that it was difficult. Uh, I like the idea of finance, um, so I gravitated towards it. I saw the opportunity to get involved further my education. I had an education in, in economics at a university degree. Um, but I also, I also studied uh, neuroscience later on, so a bit mixed on education. Yeah, I just I saw it as a good opportunity. Um, most people probably don't think this or know it, but I really, you know, I'm son of two immigrants. We didn't have a lot of money. We actually were below middle class. Um, but my parents gave me a lot of love and knowledge and encouragement, right? So I did not, you know, I always look at it and this, this, I don't, not one of those guys who gets into deep personal philosophy, but my parents really struggled quite a bit to give me an opportunity. So the way that I look things, what I tell myself is like, how dare you not make something bigger of your life for all that they struggled and suffered and my grandparents. If I don't take this and do something better, how dare I? That's just my take. So I put that on myself and I thought trading was, was a big one because I knew that when I was done as a professional, I could trade for myself and it's a skill I'd have for life. And that really excited me. That's why I kind of like the health sciences. I have an education in neuroscience. Learn about health. That's for life. You're always going to want to be healthy. Learn about finance. That's what you want, right? That's what most people want. You want to be wealthy and healthy. Health first and wealth. Health and wealth, right? So that's why I kind of like those things because what's, what's more important than that? And then you get to give back and help people. I, you know, I help people in the family with their health, and I am here helping people with finance. So that's the short story of my life. Uh, Zen, how to regain confidence after losing trades. Size down. Size down or just watch for a day. I know it's not exciting. You lost $300 yesterday, and let's say 
And then uh, what I'm saying is, we'll only go in with a hundred dollars. Yeah, but the point was to rebuild confidence and to refine your process. Size down, microwaves. Thank you, <laughs> Dixie. Uh, I can't confirm anybody is a scammer. Sorry, but I'll tell you what they do. Tim Phillips, uh, thank you. I'd use FB extensions for price targets or previous resistance. Fib, nope. Onek, I touched on that earlier. I don't use Fib or any kind of special drawing. Um, thank you, Isaac. Okay, we're just down to the last three questions. Taking over Finn to Alexander Hamilton. Puts on Furus. Puts and short those Furus. But you know what the thing is with Furus? They're good at marketing, right? That's why they get popular. Because they know how to use social media, not because they know anything about securities. Like I said, if there was money in a different space, they would have went for it. All these guys with fake profiles and like, we're part of the Golden Crew, the League of Shadows, the whatever. It's like, you, this is all marketing stuff. This is nonsense. I don't give you guys a special name like my profiteers. I feel like such a con and fake weirdo or something. I might say, hey, are my profit takers taking profit? I don't mean you're part of my special group of profit takers. I mean... Are you being a profit taker today? Are you taking profit? Literally. It's nothing to do with me. It's a profits is just it's now and taken, you know, that's what we want to do with them. So I just find them cheesy. Jake Lovato, yes, I do trade crypto. I'm bullish long term crypto, but I see uh, I see some some struggles in the in the short to medium term feds, uh, market volatility. So I'm kind of neutral right now, but yeah, I do have crypto. Um what can I do to, I spotted Qualcomm this morning, but uh, where the opening range is not getting a trade. Ken Huang, good question. So again, it comes down to comfort. And I talked about this uh, at the beginning of the video. If you want to begin engaging in the opening range, first make sure that you're comfortable everywhere else because there's high, higher volatility. I'm gonna go back here just to show everybody. Let's take a look at, uh, you said Qualcomm, right? Okay, let's take a look at Qualcomm. See what happened in the morning. Um, where does the day start? It's a really thin line because there's no pre-market after hours. Here we go. See this dotted line? That's where the day starts. Look at how it's jumping, right? It's moving quickly, right? And you see in options, there's lots of gaps. That's volatile, right? So what would you do? You would size down. Once you're comfortable with everything else and you want to get into opening range, either do it paper and tell yourself what you would have done, or if you want to get better at execution, size down. Use one contract. I know it's not what the fools say, like, I made $19 million today. First, no, they didn't. Second, who cares? Who cares what anybody's doing, right? I mean, you're you're listening to me. Does it mean that we should have the same finances and experience and results? No, I trade differently than you. What matters is you, you guys improving and benefiting in your own lives. And everybody's at a different level and it doesn't matter. Just size down and jump in. Um, that's why I do it. And then practice all the same good habits. And when you can practice good habits with small size, you can do it with bigger size. Why do I say that? Because the bigger your size, the more nerves are going to come into play. I get nerves sometimes. When it, I, I get nerves all the time. When I go on the bigger end of like my size and I go in really heavy, I, I kind of sweat it out for a second, right? Because I know that it's not always going to be perfect. And so it's natural. So just size down until you're comfortable. Um, seeing people retired and die a few years later... Makes one enjoy early. Yeah, enjoy it. What's the first thing you do when you set up daily watches using unusual whales? Um, yeah, like I said, when I set up a watch list, I do a lot of different things, right? So um, I get asked about this a lot. So what do I do? I usually have a window open watch in the flow, and then I'll just note into like a notepad on things that catch my eye when I have time to look over. I check major news on stocks, and then I'll look at those and look at their flow, see what happened. I'll look at stocks who really deviated from their normal range, had big moves. And I'll check that. And then I'll, I'll scan some other stocks. There's a lot of different things that I do. Um, Splatula, do you feel that unusual whales partners aren't properly vetted? Good question. It's not their responsibility to, to vet whether you're legitimate. Because a lot of those guys are con artists to the extreme. But that has nothing to do with unusual whales. Um, if you have reach, it makes sense for them to partner with you. They're not endorsing anyone's uh, specific feed. They're not saying that this person knows what they're doing. What they're saying is, hey, you're big. We're willing to part with you if you drive us traffic, right? Their job is to make sure that they have a good service. But yeah, if you are just some nut job, right? And you say, hey, we'll partner with you. You could be anybody. You could just be a YouTuber who takes videos of flowers or has nothing to do with finance. But if you have a 10 million person audience, Unusual Whales will partner with you. 
They don't need to know that you know anything about finance and you can be the absolute biggest con artist. It is not their fault. They don't have to do that. They shouldn't have to do that. He's trying to grow the business of unusual whales and make sure that it's a good value. I think it's a good value. I don't stand behind anything that isn't that I don't believe is a good value. Um, just like I wouldn't refer anybody to Webull. People are asking, saying, I'm signing up. Give me your referral URL. And I said, I, I, I can't. I don't like the fact that they don't have an options matrix. Uh, thanks for sharing your techniques. Is there a way to put your stops in a dollar amount versus a premium price on Thinkorswim? Absolutely. You can click on it in Active Trader um, and Tony Proof. Respect. Okay. It's so, um, longer than I was expecting, but uh, I appreciate all of you. Great day today. I hope I answered every question. I try to answer every single question. I don't run from things. I don't speak in indefinitive terms. If you do like unusual whales, uh, heads up. Probably should have said this sooner. Price is going up 10% in 2022. So uh, you have my referral, my coupon code in my bio. The coupon is profits taken, no space. It's 5% off. So effectively, that's 15% off because prices will be going up 10%. It's a great trading day. Um, if you have questions, we'll do more of these guys. Don't worry about it. I'm glad we were able to recap and help everybody understand a little bit of their entries and what not to worry about and um, on to better things. Um, last question. Oh, I see this. <laughs> Nixie, are you a partner of Unusual Whales? If you aren't, they should give you some equity. I am not a partner with them. Uh, but yeah, if you already have it, you can add my code in as your referral if you're already subscribed with them anyhow. I'm not. Um, maybe one day I'll, I'll build something really cool for everybody, but I, I love unusual whales and what they're doing. I think it's, it's great. So thank you all guys. Everybody have a, have an awesome day. We'll be back at it tomorrow. I appreciate all of you.